Hello, and welcome back to the Struggle Security YouTube channel, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. That's the tagline. And if this is your first time here, I would like to invite you to press the subscribe button and for you to hit the bell for you to get more and more of this content. Let's just jump right into it because I wanna cover the question, probably one of the most common questions that I get all the time for people who are career transitioners or people who are outside of cybersecurity. And it's the question of, do I need math to get into cybersecurity. Do I need math? And that's the question that we're gonna go over today where I wanna tell you about some of those math struggles or even just what that really means of do I need math to get into cybersecurity? So let me start off by telling you about a little bit about my own background. And my background is very interesting because as I mentioned in one of my previous videos about my journey, my struggle journey, is that I actually come from an engineering major or engineering background. My undergraduate was in electrical engineering. And for those who know about electrical engineers, we do a lot of math. We do a whole bunch of math within our studies and even within the field. So when I was in college, I took calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, differential equations, linear algebra, engineering for statistics or statistics for engineering majors. Those are the type of classes that I took but even going even a little bit further back, telling you about some of my experience, when I was in middle school, all the way throughout high school, I was a part of a math program, or really what it was called was a summer math camp. It was called the Wayne State Math Corps in Detroit, Michigan. And I was a part of that all throughout, from middle school, right? I'm probably like 11 or 12 years old, all the way to me graduating from high school. So I have a very extensive background in learning math, whether in high school, whether in college, and also within electrical engineering in general. It's a very math intensive major. And I say all that to say, not to brag to say I'm just this math guy because I love math, right? I'm not saying that to say I'm this math guy, but I'm saying that to say all that math I learned before, I don't use any of it in cybersecurity, zero. I don't use any of the math that I learned from all the way from middle school, all the way to I graduated from college. I don't use any of it. And that's really what I wanna start off with, is that although I have a very extensive math background, my success in cybersecurity did not come from a lot of extensive, high level and advanced math mathematics. And I wanna present that to you, right? Those who are new or transitioning, you do not need a whole lot of math to be successful and to get in, and really to get into cybersecurity. Now I wanna say that with caveats, moving to the second point is that there's some caveats that come with that because even though you don't need it to be successful in cybersecurity, there are some specific focuses in the field, focuses in cybersecurity that focus in on math and advanced mathematics. And those are cryptography, that of encryption, that of data analytics as it concerns cybersecurity, and even that of security for blockchain technology. Those are some different fields or very specializations, I would even say, in cybersecurity where you would need more advanced mathematics. Now, I would say to just Google those, right, to look at some of that, right? You, you might need some um, mathematics theory and probability and statistics because really with cryptography, you are looking at encrypting messages, whether in transit or whether at rest, and you want those messages to be secure from those eyes who shouldn't be seeing it from whether it's those hackers or just people who shouldn't be seeing that information. So that is one of those caveats that I wanna to present to you as it concerns math in cybersecurity. Now, the second caveat I would say is that you do need some level of mathematics. So you can say that, you know, I wouldn't say that you can come to cybersecurity without being able to add, subtract, multiply, divide. You need those basics. You need very much so of those basics um, of mathematics to be successful. And that might come in the form of IP subnetting mathematics or some type of networking mathematics to understand like IP addresses and MAC addresses, which are numbers, but really being able to understand maybe this type of concept, right? You, for a subnet, there are a certain number of hosts or devices that can get IP addresses within the subnetwork. You might need to be able to mean need to calculate what that subnet is, right? How many hosts can I assign to this subnet of devices? That might be something that you might need for networking or even cybersecurity. That's just a small example, but you need to know how to multiply, add, divide in order to be in cybersecurity. I would say you need some of that. 
So those are the two caveats that I want to present to you that of there are some specializations like cryptography where you would need to go into some deeper level of mathematics, but you also need a base level of mathematics in order to be successful. Now, if it's not math, um, what is it that you need to be successful or what are those things that you need as a foundation and a basis to get into the field? I would say one, you do need, and, and I spoke about a little bit earlier, some of that networking background, some of that network understanding. And I would highly encourage you um, to look at the CompTIA Network Plus or the Cisco Certified Network Associates uh, um, type of certifications and look over what that um, syllabus is for those certifications. And that is really the some of the level of networking knowledge that, that you need because computer networking tells you how devices talk on a network, right? How are devices talking? What languages are they talking? And what communications are happening? And when you throw cybersecurity on top of that, you're looking at doing this in a secure manner. So having that network foundation is important to get into cybersecurity. I would say another one would be understanding operating systems, that of Mac devices, that of Windows operating systems and Linux operating systems, understanding the basics of those and even a little bit of network administration or system administration. Like how do you assign, like I was mentioning before, IP addresses to these devices? How is the information on those operating systems secure? What type of technologies and tools are used for security purposes on these devices? And if you're looking at offensive cybersecurity, you're looking at how to find vulnerabilities and exploit them on these different operating systems. So that's another one, right? That's that second one is having some system administration or operating system administration background and understanding. And I would say pretty much the last one is having the question, questioning type of attitude. Have a questioning attitude all of the time. That's very important to be successful here because you need to understand or really understand what you don't know. So you need to ask a lot of questions in order to fill in those gaps and that understanding of what you don't currently have. And that really is a big help within the field because you don't, you won't know everything. You don't know everything. And to be able to ask the right questions will help you get closer to where you desire to go and to close some of those knowledge gaps and some of those struggles that you might have. So not only should you have that questioning attitude, but you should have the ability to what you call lab up your environment and be able to practice some of your skills. So I'm going to give you an example here of something that is a good skill in cybersecurity, and it's called network traffic analysis. We did a little bit of this in one of my previous videos where we were looking at some of the packet captures or the PCAPs that were going over a network, and we were able to analyze it for some vulnerabilities. So let me show you an example here. And this is a place where you can practice. And this website is awesome. It's called malwaretrafficanalysis.net. And really this here um, gives you the ability to practice packet capture analysis. Now, when you go to the website, I would say you will come to this area where it says traffic analysis exercises, and you will click on this one here where it says for training exercises to analyze PCAP or packet capture files of network traffic. So here you press click. And then really what they give you are several of these exercises that gives you the ability to practice analyzing malicious, right? The malware traffic, the malicious network traffic to be able to find vulnerabilities and ways that bad guys have been able to get in. And that's in the form of incidents. So here, I'm just gonna click on this first one. And this was one is from January 7th, 2022. And this one is a traffic analysis exercise and it's called Spoon Watch. So it's kind of funny. They give some funny themes. They said January 2022 traffic analysis exercise spoon watch. So what you would do here is that you would download this zip file and you would open it up on your local machine. And all you need is one tool in order to do this analysis. And that tool is called Wireshark. So I'm going to put a link of Wireshark down there in the description. So you'll be able to follow along and be able to download this and go through this your, yourself. So the great thing about it is that it gives a foundation or a scenario to what you would actually be looking for. Um, and it says this is a land segment or local area network segment data. And it gives you some information that would be interesting for you to look at as you're investigating this network traffic. And it gives you a task, right? It says write an incident report based on the PCAP and the alerts. 
and it says the incident report should contain three sections. So this is something that's very practical to what we do in the field. You're always doing network traffic analysis if you're doing that of incident response, or even if you're doing a security assessment on an environment, right? You might say, you might see that a device or a customer might see that a device is acting funny. It might have some ransomware on it or some commodity rent or some commodity malware. And one thing that you might do is that you would capture network traffic from that environment and then you would do your analysis. So here, it's great. It gives you that foundation of what that report would be. And then finally, you they give the answer too, if you get stuck. And being someone who's new, don't be scared to click the answers. You don't have to struggle through it all the way by yourself. You can start it off, but then when you see the answers, you see the way that the analysis occurs, it gives you a good idea and tools that you can put in your pocket to do the analysis for the next section or the next uh, PCAP. So like I said before, you would download this and here I have the example here. When you download this, this is what you would see. This is Wireshark, this is the Wireshark tool here. And you're seeing numbers, you're seeing protocols, you're seeing other numbers and other inf information. This is an example of something that you can do in order to practice. And that's in the form of this malware traffic analysis website. And that's gonna be in the description also. So we have, I think we have dispelled this, this myth that you have to have a lot of mathematics or mathematics in order to get into cybersecurity. You do not, you do not need that. And really what you need is just the ability and those foundational skills that I mentioned earlier in the video. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. And if you have any more questions, please put them in the comment section and subscribe again if, if, if you're seeing this section. And thank you for coming and come back for another one of our Struggle Security YouTube videos where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Thank you.